When we hear the names of New York City neighborhoods like Greenwich Village and Hell's Kitchen, we usually associate them with the stores and the buildings and the landmarks that are there. But have you ever stopped to think about how these neighborhoods ended up with these sometimes odd names? And it's not just those two. If you look anywhere on the map of New York, you'll find a neighborhood with a weird name. So let's explore the amusing stories behind some of these New York City neighborhood names, starting off with the Manhattan neighborhoods. Greenwich Village. A village within a city? That doesn't seem right, does it? Well, up until the 1800s, Greenwich Village was seen as a peaceful settlement outside of the city proper. It frequently served as a safe haven for New Yorkers fleeing the yearly outbreaks of cholera and yellow fever. The Meatpacking District. While today it's the center of the city's nightlife, back in the early 1900s, this area was known for its concentration of slaughterhouses and meatpacking plants. According to Mental Floss, at one point there were 250 of these facilities crammed here. Could you imagine the smell? The Garment District. Another literal neighborhood name, the Garment District got its moniker from being the hub of New York City's fashion industry. The designing, the manufacturing, the selling, it was all done there. Today, only a few remnants of this neighborhood's past life remains. Now, it's the area that you pass through on your way to Penn Station to Times Square. Times Square. No, it's not an actual square. And no, it has nothing to do with the passage of time. The origin of Times Square's name is not all that deep. Times Square is called a square because it's an intersection of two roads, Broadway and 7th Avenue. As for the Times part of the name, that refers to the New York Times newspaper. The paper was briefly headquarters here in the early 1900s before moving to 8th Avenue. Hell's Kitchen. Although the real estate industry prefers to call this area Clinton after the neighborhood's largest park, the Wit Clinton Park, this devilish moniker has been in use since the 1860s. The origin of the name is debated. Some sources say that newcomers gave it this nickname because they found it similar to an area in London. Others say that a cop looking around at the neighborhood slums and crime said to his partner, this place is hell itself. And then the partner quit back. Hell is a mild climate. This is Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> Either way, the name is here to stay. Tribeca. This odd name is actually a shorter way of saying Triangle Below Canal Street. And if you check a map, the neighborhood is really shaped like a triangle. Now let's go across the river to Brooklyn and see what weird neighborhood names we can find there. Dumbo. It's neither an insult to the residents or a reference to the flying elephant. Like Tribeca, Dumbo is another acronym, down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. Downtown Brooklyn. Geographically, this name doesn't make much sense, as this neighborhood is located in the northwestern part of Brooklyn. But if you consider how downtowns are usually the areas with the most political and commercial activity, then this neighborhood's name is less of a head scratcher. But do you know what will always be confusing? trying to figure out what the neighborhood boundaries really are. Coney Island. Not only did this seaside Maryland used to be an island, it also used to be full of rabbits. Coney is the supposedly English bastardization of the old Dutch word for rabbit, Conan. Williamsburg. Obviously Williamsburg was named after some guy named Williams. No brainer, right? But what if I told you that this wasn't your run-of-the-mill Williams? Williamsburg was named after Jonathan Williams, a U.S. Army Corps engineer, and more importantly, Benjamin Franklin's grandnephew. Keep said bay. No, this southern Brooklyn community didn't derive its name because the area is shaped like a sheep's head. Sheep's head bay actually refers to a fish that used to be found in the bay's water. And for the love of all things good and pure, do not look up the sheep's head fish. The image will scar you for life. Let's just change the subject and talk about Queens neighborhood names instead. That'll be less traumatizing. Astoria. Sometimes flattery only gets you 500 bucks. That's the lesson that Stephen and John Halsey learned when they named their land in Northwestern Queens after John Jacob Astor, the wealthiest man in the US at the time. 
the Halsey brothers thought that by naming the land after Astor, he would feel compelled to help with its development, like he did with the city of Astoria, Oregon. But in this case, Astor, a man worth billions in today's money, was flattered only enough to give $500. Sunnyside. This Queens neighborhood must have been quite picturesque back in the 1700s. According to Forgotten New York, the Braga family who had a farm in the area called the land Sunnyside because it gave them a front row seat to magnificent sunrises and sunsets. Queens residents, is this still true? Jamaica. You'd think whoever named this New York City neighborhood was trying to bring a piece of the Caribbean to New York. But actually, the namers had a certain bucktooth animal in mind, or rather the Native American tribe with the same name. The name Jamaica comes from the Algonquian word Jamaico, which means beaver. The Native Americans who lived in the area were also referred to as the Jamaico. The whole. It doesn't get more literal than this. This plot of land on the border between Brooklyn and Queens lies 30 feet below the surrounding area. This feature, compiled with its lack of sewer service, means that the area is frequently flooded. What else would you find in the hole? Perhaps a dead body. Rumor has it that this place used to be a mafia dumping ground. And on that lovely note, let's talk about the Bronx. Boyton Dival. Try saying this New York City neighborhood name three times fast. Named after a creek separating Manhattan and the Bronx, Sploit and Dival has disputed meanings and disputing, disputed origin stories. According to Washington Irving, the man who gave us the word Knickerbocker, a Dutch trumpeter said that he would swim across the creek during a 17th century British attack on New Amsterdam in spite of the devil. Spoiler, he didn't make it. Other sources say that the name refers to a fountain that spits water into the creek which settlers called Spouting Devil or Spitting Devil. Whatever the origin, the name is fun to say. Spoit and Devil. Co-op City. Leave it to Robert Moses to bestow such a matter-of-fact name on a place. Co-op City, or Cooperative City, is the largest cooperative apartment complex ever built, with an astonishing 15,000 apartments. Check out this curbed article on this unique New York City neighborhood. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now, on to Staten Island. St. George. Put your swords away. St. George has nothing to do with the dragon-slaying Christian saint. The northern Staten Island neighborhood is named for a less holier George, George Law. Law was a property owner who refused to sell his land to the developers of the Staten Island Ferry Terminal unless they agreed to name the terminal after him. They caved to his demand, with not only the terminal, but also the surrounding neighborhood being named after this not quite saintly George. So which New York City neighborhood name origin story was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section. But before you go, if you liked this video, then like this video and subscribe to this channel for more New York City history, culture, and things to do. I also have a blog called Shallow in the City where I have over a hundred articles on learning about and exploring New York. And also follow me on social media where I post New York City tips and trivia every weekday. Thanks for watching.